What's up everybody? It's Matt, Comic Quarter 410. Over the past several weeks, I did pretty well at a few sales and digging in some discount bins. But before I get into any of that stuff, I wanted to share some books that I got from some really good friends. To start off, these are Dynamic Forces exclusives to Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures by Ken Hazer. They're the signed and remarked editions, limited to a thousand copies each. This is the sketch cover to number one, remarked with a Batman head. And they all have the uh, certificate. This one's limited to 750 copies. This is the color cover to Batman Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Adventures number one, DF exclusive. He remarked it with a turtle. And these are a thousand copies. Really love this cover to Batman TMNT Adventures number two. And Ken remarked it with a Joker head down there. And that's a thousand copies. And issue number three, another beautiful cover he remarked with a Harley Quinn headshot. And limited to a thousand copies. So very happy to get my hands on those. This is a Deadpool sketch that Buzz Hassan did for me on a Deadpool, the Mercs for the Money, number one blank. Did it with uh, just black and white and gray tones. I think it turned out beautifully. Very happy with that one. I bought a Slab G.I. Joe Reniger variant off my buddy Evan Leahy. And as I had said before, out of the kindness of his heart, he just threw in these books because he knew I didn't have them and I would like them. This is a Street Fighter Unlimited number one Newberry Comics exclusive, and it's an Udon Studios cover. Obvious homage to Dark Knight Returns number one. Really love that cover. Thank you for that, Evan. And Evan knows I'm a big Eric Powell fan. I got the regular cover to Nam Wolf number one, but I was kind of bummed I couldn't get the Eric Powell cover. So Evan found one at his shop and sent it to me for free. So really, really appreciate that. Thanks a lot. And did another trade with my good buddy Tom Ryan. And he was also nice enough to get me some books signed at East Coast Comic Con. The first book in our trade is the Superman Whitman variant. Tom hooked me up with a Condor Man number three, which completes my miniseries. This is one of the first superhero movies I remember in my lifetime. It's kind of cheesy, but I loved it as a kid, so I'm happy to have that. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, Tom sent me some amazing Spider-Mans I needed. He sent me 416, 425, 432. And he also sent me Batman 458, Batman 490 with a great... Art T. Barrett cover there. Batman 503. Oops, these are going to fall. Hold on. That 503 had a Kelly Jones cover on it. Really dig that. And these are the books I sent Tom to get signed at East Coast Comic Con for me. He took my Burly Man comic Shaolin Cowboy number one second print and got Jeff Darrow to sign it for me. And Tom said without him even asking... Jeff Doro remarked it in the inside back cover there. Really neat looking remark. And he signed it again. So thank you so much for getting that done for me, Tom. And Kyle Baker was at Tom's show. Really like Kyle Baker's artwork. Never had the chance to meet him. He stopped doing conventions for a very long time because he left the comics field to work in Hollywood and animation. And Tom got some of Kyle Baker's spectacular Plastic Man Run signed for me. Got my issue two signed. And my Plastic Man number eight signed. If any of you are Plastic Man fans and you have not read Kyle Baker's run, you're doing yourself a huge disservice. It's amazing. This is the last book I got from Tom in our trade and the one I was the most excited to get my hands on. This is Vampire Tales number one and it's the first solo Morbius story. So thank you very much for those, Tom, and I appreciate you getting my book signed for me. Next up, don't normally show a lot of stuff off my uh, pull list, but I was glad I didn't know about this till after it came out, but 
Batman's on my pull list anyway, so my shop had, hold, had held it for me. And apparently, I haven't read it, but in this issue, apparently Batman proposes to Selina Kyle. They've been married before uh, in other, you know, other uh, realities in DC, and multiple times. And with my experience, marriage issues never really hold their value in the long term. So it's kind of shocked to see this going for twenty to thirty bucks already, but I think it will cool off. Nevertheless, I'm glad to have it because it's you know on my pull list and I didn't want to miss that for my Batman run. I've been buying all of Frank Cho's alternate covers to Wonder Woman and now Harley Quinn and I just wanted to show this one because he used a new colorist uh, starting with this issue or the issue before but I really really like how this cover turned out and plus it's Harley in her classic animated costume so really dig that. Jeff Dara's new Shaolin Cowboy miniseries Super strange, but I still love it. Seems like with every uh, new mini series they do for Shaolin Cowboy, it gets stranger and stranger. But really, really dig this Frank Cho variant to issue number two, so I had to scoop that. Unfortunately, the artist's name is escaping me right now, but got this cover to Vampirella number three, and due to this retro Nazi bondage cover. He was basically forced to resign from Dynamite. But of course they printed the cover and sold a bunch of them. But he was forced, basically given the option, my understanding was he was given the option to be fired or to resign. Found another copy of J. Scott Campbell's cover to Southern Nightgown number one. It was at this shop, still on the shelf for cover price, so I grabbed it. Did some discount bin scrounging. Was happy to find this in the dollar bin. Steve Rude's Incredible Hulk vs. Superman. Absolutely love that cover. As you know, I love Steve Rude's work. These books were hot not too long ago. Uh, this is Iron Man 304, Crash and Burn uh, storyline. This is the first Hulk Buster armor and 305. Yeah, I believe that was like a $20 book not too long ago. Found it discount now. Um, found another copy of the Spawn Batman one-shot by Frank Miller and Todd McFarlane in the dollar bin. Perfect copy, so I scooped it. Peter Bags hate number six for a buck. Beautiful, beautiful Adam Hughes Legionnaires cover to issue 16 for a buck. Grabbed this because I just thought it'd be cool to look through. It was a dollar. Uh, this is a Pacific Comics mail-order catalog from 1975, so... Just thought it'd be cool to look through and see what they were selling stuff then. Selling stuff for then, rather, excuse me. Uh, also in the dollar bin, found this S. Clay Wilson book I hadn't seen before. Kingdom of Evil number one with some crazy, crazy S. Clay Wilson art there. Found Lobo and Dead Man, the Brave and the Bold. One shot. This has some problems, but... Uh, found this in the dollar bin XYZ comics it's a kitchen sink press not sure what issue this is but it has uh, Robert Crumb work on it and wasn't really sure what this was but for a buck I just grabbed it uh, fan edition spawn number two got classic Star Wars number nine the early adventures with a Boba Fett cover for a buck was really happy to find this uh, in the dollar bin my experience, the Innovation Friday, uh, excuse me, Innovation Nightmare on Elm Street books are pretty tough to find. They have great cover art, and there was a regular edition to Freddy's Dead and the 3D version. So this is a perfect copy. Snatched it up for a buck, and it has the 3D glasses. And already had one and two, but um, found the full Death's Head two mini series for a buck each. Number one. Number two, number three, and number four from the short-lived American imprint of Marvel UK Comics. Some Bronze Age books on discount at the sale. Um, did a knocked out a big chunk of my what if run I had a number two already but I got it signed by Herb Trimpey and I gave it to my buddy Evan Leahy so got a cheap copy of number two 
All these were under five bucks actually, which was awesome. What if number three? I guess is a yeah, Gil Kane cover. What if number four? Nice bright copy there. It's a small fox here. Great cover here to what if number five. Number six. What if number seven? Number eight. A beautiful cover there. It might be Kane as well. Um, what if number nine? And that, I believe, completes what if one through 15 or one through 18 for me. So still working on those. I love that series as a kid because they could do the craziest stuff in the book and it wouldn't impact continuity, so the editors would let them go crazy on those books. Got some nice X Men on uh, discount. Got X Men 107. So, first appearance of a bunch of people. Um, Star Jammers, and I believe some of the Shi'ar Empire as well. Uh, X Men 109. Beautiful, beautiful copy of First Vindicator. A lot of these were in really great shape. This is Uncanny 118. I think this might be where Sunfire joins, but I might be wrong about this. But this is also uh, first appearance of Mariko. Second appearance or first full appearance of Alpha Flight. Outstanding Cockrum cover uh, to X-Men 121. And this is a beautiful, beautiful near mint to near mint minus copy. This is an upgrade for me. Paid hardly anything for it. Uncanny 125. This was like, I want to say this was like six or eight bucks. Uh, this one has a few spine ticks on it, but nevertheless, a great deal on it. Um, Uncanny 131 with a great cover by the great team of John Byrne and Terry Austin. One of my favorite covers of John Byrne and Austin's run here, Uncanny X Men 133, where Wolverine unleashes his Berserker Rage for the first time. And I got Uncanny 144 with Man Thing. So I was very, very happy with those and what I paid for them. <clears throat> also got a really good deal on a huge stack of ash cans. I tried to pick a few out and he said just give me 10 bucks for the whole stack. So they ended up being almost like, I think they were less than 50 cents a piece. But uh, some of the highlights were I got this Batman Grendel red foil ash can. Batman Dark Joker, The Wild Ash Can, The Shadow Hawk Saga Ash Can, Pit Red Foil Ash Can, got a second copy of the Ghost in the Shell Ash Can. This was fetching a little money before the movie came out. It's cooled way off. Um, I believe this was a San Diego Comic Con exclusive, but don't hold me to that. But this is the Stormwatch red ash can and pretty limited print on that um this was not in any discount bin i believe i paid 10 bucks for this but i've been looking for this for a long long time the dark horse prestige format of art adams creature from the black lagoon adaptation also has interior art by art adams i got the creature from the black lagoon print off him when i met him but i didn't have that book to get signed so hopefully i get to see him again this has some problems, but found it for a buck. Uh, DC Comics presents Black Circle Whitman variant, and never going to leave those behind for those prices. My shop gave me an excellent, excellent deal on this Venom 150 Gabriel Delato 1 in 25 variant. I believe this was 10 bucks or 12.50. Really hooked me up on that. Found these. Uh, these were like. $2.50 or $3 after the sale price, but uh, this is the George Perez Sirens number one wraparound virgin variant and another variant to Sirens number one that I didn't have. So I have every cover to every issue of that now. Did a lot of work on magazines over the past two weeks. These were only a couple bucks, and uh, my shop owner actually pulled these aside for me. 
because he knows I love Jim Steranko. I admittedly didn't even know this cover existed to Erie number 25. Beautiful, spooky, painted cover by Jim Steranko. Two bucks. Can't argue with that. And this is in pretty nice shape, too. This is the first appearance of the Rook, Erie number 82. Got a great deal on that for $2. Um, this is still sealed. This is uh, ties in with the DC Invasion miniseries that McFarlane drew in the 80s. And it's a newspaper talking about it. Was really happy to get this. He knew no one else would buy it, so he gave it to me for two bucks. Uh, I'm not sure exactly which series this is, but this is a Japanese kind of almost uh, graphic novel sized Jade Man comics. It's you know 26 cover price, which is nonsense, but uh. Very cool when they gave that to me cheap. If anybody exactly knows which Jade Man comics that is, please let me know. Got another Conan Marvel graphic novel for my run, Conan of the Isles. This is a beautiful, beautiful cover. Now I only need Conan the Rogue, which goes for absurd prices for no good apparent reason. I say it's a low print run, but I'm not paying over $100 for that. Hope to find one someday. Got this beautiful, beautiful high-grade copy of Harlan Ellison and Richard Corbin's Vic Blood uh, graphic novel. It looks like it hasn't even been read. This is pretty hard to find. And uh, I believe this is... No, it's not a fan of graphics, but... Yeah, this, this dealer, the Richard Corbin stuff he got, it looked like whoever he bought them off of never read them. They're beautiful. And was really happy to get my hands on this. This is a reprint of the Heavy Metal Alien illustrated story based on the movies from 1979 outstanding interior cover or color art rather by Walt Simonson if you are a fan of the alien franchise I highly suggest you track one of those down beautiful beautiful stuff got a great deal on these uh, from my friend who's a local dealer um, really excellent deal i'm very happy with these this i had a few of these but this number one's clearly an upgrade for me this is probably a vf plus maybe even a near mint minus copy of deadly hands of kung fu number one absolutely love these neil adams bruce lee covers to all these so was really stoked to get my hands on that got uh another neil adams cover here to deadly hands number two this is another beautiful copy, probably a near mint minus. Got an upgrade to number three. Another stunning Neil Adams cover with Jim Kelly, a.k.a. Black Belt Jones and Bruce Lee on the cover. I mean, what I paid for all of these together i think the number one is probably worth at least that or more alone so he gave me a great deal on them he always gives me a discount got deadly hands number four another stunning neil adams cover david carradine from the kung fu tv series got deadly hands number seven getting really close to finishing the run not sure if that's bob larkin or who painted that cover no earl norham one of my favorites so, uh, I believe this is Neil again. This is uh, Deadly Hands number 11 with Billy Jack. Yep, that's Neil. And not sure who did this one. This is Deadly Hands of Kung Fu number 32. This is first appearance of the Daughters of the Dragon. This has been heating up. So I was glad to get that knocked out for my run. To finish off, got a great deal on these Epic Illustrated magazines. Love this stuff. I know Howler Mouse just showed a few of these, but uh, I grabbed these a couple weeks ago as a set minus the one uh, sampler I'll show you in a second. Uh, these, they, they had the set on the shelf for a while, I think for 75 bucks, and uh, I talked him down to 40. So I got this for $5.00. Epic Illustrated number one, great cover by the leg <laughs> late legendary Frank Frazetta, excuse me. And same cover, this is the sampler I was talking about. I bought this elsewhere, 
This is probably a VF minus copy. There's a nice crease on the uh, corner of the back cover. But uh, it's much thinner, as you can see, a spectacular sampler of selected pages. This is basically an RRP edition from the 80s. It was only sent to certain shops who had a diamond account. And this was limited to only 500 copies back then when it came out. So it's pretty tough to track down. And again, the rest of these were $5. I was so stoked about that. Epic Illustrated number two with a cover by Richard Corbin. Of course, one of my favorites. This was the main reason I bought these um, Epic Illustrated number three. This is first Dreadstar. It was the only halfway sought after Dreadstar book I was missing. And when they announced that a movie may be coming, this book shot up to an absurd price and I stayed away from it. And now that it's cooled way off, I got it for five bucks. It does have a little bit of waviness up here on the top, but still a nice copy other than that, especially for five bucks. Uh, this is Epic Illustrated number four. Great, great Mike Kaluta Conan cover. Absolutely love that one. Epic Illustrated number five with a great fantasy cover by the Brothers Hildebrandt. Number six with a stunning Neil Adams cover. Beautiful Conan cover here by Barry Windsor Smith to issue number seven. And Howard Chaikin on Epic Illustrated number eight. So I was very happy to get my hands on those and uh, pick those up where I can find them but it was a nice nice swoop on one through eight because I needed all those but one issue and I really would have bought it just to get the dread star issue so very happy with those and everyone as always I appreciate your time appreciate you stopping by big thank you again to Buzz and Ken and Evan Leahy and Tom Ryan everyone take care of yourselves and enjoy your comic books